posture and the stress response. Very apt at the moment with everything that's going on. Always very apt, actually. So let's, before we look at the stress response, let's have a look at what is posture. So posture is the alignment of the body parts in relationship to one another at any given moment. It involves a really complex interaction between the bones, joints, connective tissue, skeletal muscles, and the central and peripheral nervous system. It is extremely complex. It's so complex that it's very difficult for us to comprehend when we look at the variety of human postures. It's difficult to comprehend what's going on, all the centers within the brain that are being stimulated, all the minute movements of the postural muscles, which all that information being fed back up to the brain. So if we're going to look at stress, and posture and assess postures in our clinics, what is the best approach? So we use a plumb line to assess the static upright posture in core postural alignment. It's a very simple plumb line and a footboard. We make some very simple, again, measurements and review the whole posture looking for obvious changes from what we call the ideal posture. And the ideal posture, we term the, I, the physiological efficient posture. And the physiological efficient posture is the one we've evolved in this Earth's gravitational field to, to evolve the optimal structure and posture for our upright spines that minimizes the effects of the constant downward pull of gravity. That's the physiological efficient posture minimize the constant pulling down of gravity. Whilst gravity is pulling us down, the Earth supports us. It balances that energy with what's called the ground reaction force. So we have the pull of gravity down and the ground reaction force coming back up. So when we're in this physiological efficient posture, these two forces, the force of gravity and the ground reaction force, are balanced. So we have gravity pulling down the body and the ground reaction force coming up through the lower body and they get balanced out in this sacral pelvic area here. So when we have the physiological efficient posture, we can feel weightless. So it's the, the parts of the body are correctly aligned to all the other parts of the body and were correctly aligned to the gravitational field. As you can imagine, that's quite complex and quite huge. Many of you will have heard of Ida Rolf. She was the founder of the technique Rolfing. And she says that in the balanced body does not experience weight due to gravi gravity. So when we're in the physiological efficient posture, we will not feel the experience weight due to the pull of gravity. What it means in our terms is, the body is working efficiently. The muscles and everything is working efficiently in this posture. At the plumb line, what we see in this physiological efficient posture, we would see the plumb line by setting the body in two. So we would have even tension left and right. The pelvis would be nicely aligned. The pelvis would be level with the shoulders and the base of the skull. The body the weight would be evenly distributed down the legs. From the side, we would see the plumb line coming down through the middle of the ear, the shoulder, middle of the hips. And we would have three nice curves, the cervical curve, the thoracic curve, and the lumbar curve. This is what we would call a physiological efficient posture in the upright position. If you want to know the actual anatomical terms, you can go and have a look at the slides to get those, but I don't want to just repeat them here and now be a bit boring. What happens though when we lose the physiological efficient posture? The body then has to start to hold itself up against the pull of gravity. It's no longer working efficiently, requires a greater need for metabolic substrates because we've got more energy being required to hold ourselves upright. We produce more waste material. So it's a lot more going on in the body, a lot more demands on the body. 
So what do we think postural assessment is actually an indicator of? Well, we've we already talked about it's an indicator of the interaction with gravity. We can look and we can look at the spine and we can see the health of the spine. We see where maybe the, the, the person is struggling to hold themselves, so there might be areas of um, inflammation in the spine. It can be an indicator of physical stress on the body. It can be an indicator of vitality because of what we just said, where we're using more substrates, more energy that require that, that just detracts from our overall energy for vitality. It may increase the biological age, the, the, process, the, the rate at which we are actually aging. There's neurological stresses going on, and as a result, we can have a greater inflammatory response. So the posture is an indicator of general health and well-being as well as the interaction with gravity. If we look at the bodily systems, in the ideal upright physiological efficient posture, all these various bodily systems are all sitting in the correct relationship to each other. We have the good internal architecture. Everything is balanced. The organs are not experience the gravitational pull. So they work efficiently. The blood supply to them is balanced, the correct nerve supply to them as well. So everything is working as it should be. They work together to mend the functions of the body. They are self-regulating. And when they are working in this sort of efficient, self-regulating way, they maintain the balance within the body or homeostasis, as I'm sure it's a term you'll be familiar with. So homeostasis is basically maintaining the internal environment by, keeping, by working within the same sort of parameters. It's the body again working efficiently. However, life presents to us various stressors. And there was a Hungarian-Canadian endocrinologist who in the 1930s did a lot of work on stress and the stress response. And he states that stress is the non-specific reaction of the body to any demand placed on it. And eventually stress is reflected by the rate of all wear and tear. And we call that life, basically. So let's have a look a bit more deeper into this. So when we're in a state of stress, we have distressing effects within the body. And in order to maintain the homeostatic balance, the body goes through a, three stages, according to Hans Selye. That are display, three stages of stress are displayed by all animals, according to Hans Selye. And he called it the General Adaptation Syndrome, GAS for short. So, there are three stages. The alarm reaction, the resistance reaction, and finally, exhaustion. So let's just have a look at the alarm reaction. The alarm reaction is what we typically call the fight or flight reaction. Women, it tends to be tend and befriend. We have the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system and the adrenal medulla. There's a big increase in circulation, particularly to the limbs so that we can run or deal with the, the stress that we've been dealt with. There's more energy production and a decrease in non-essential activities. If that stressor is removed, the body recovers. The parasympathetic nervous system is activated and the body works to maintain homeostasis. And we say the body is working within its elastic limits. So what happens if we go beyond the elastic limits? Let's go a bit there. So let's imagine we've got stress and we've got a stress bucket. We like to think of stress coming into our bodies and it's a bit like a bucket and the stress keeps coming in. If we don't deal with it, eventually the body becomes strained. It goes beyond its elastic limits. So instead, what happens is this elastic band would become permanently altered or eventually break. The, the atoms within it become too stressed. The body goes beyond its elastic limits. So we have to adapt to this new state of strain. And what does this mean? 
This is the second stage, the resistance reaction that Hans Selye was talking about. It's the long-term reaction to continual stressors. The thing about stressors is, if you're experiencing one for a short period of time, like within the fight-flight reaction, and then it's removed, you recover. If you're experiencing one for an extended period of time, or for most of us in this Western world, it's several at the same time, then what we have is we have to adapt to this constant state of these stressors, a state of strain, and we become, instead of being in homeostasis, we develop a state called allostasis, where we maintain the internal environment by resetting the parameters. And if we're in a state of sustained allostosis over a period of time, there becomes a cumulative cost or load which is known as the allostatic load. Now, there's been a lot of research over the last 20 years or so to show that chronic stress results in an increased risk for physical and mental, in an increased risk of physical and mental diseases or health challenges. And stress has been shown to be the common factor of even 75% to 90% of diseases such as cardiovascular, metabolic diseases, cancer, whatever it might be, COVID-19, it could be all sorts of things. And it's due to the allostatic load on the body. Or is it? But we think so. Let's have a look at the classes of stressors. Now, we said earlier that if there's just one stressor, it's removed, you recover several at the same time, we struggle. These are just some of the classes of stressors, which I'm sure you recognize. Reaction, immunological reaction, lack of rest, overwork, sugar, sugar has quite a stress response in the body, oxygen-free oxygen radicals, strong emotions, immobility, poor posture being a stressor itself, dehydration, and there's lots more that I'm sure you can come up with, but one which you're probably not thinking of is gravity itself, a 24-7 stressor on the body if we've lost our physiological efficient posture. So gravity keeps working as a stressor, and it's one of those that we're, we're keen in core postural alignment to actually deal with the effects of gravity on the body. Let's just have a look at native cultures because they've just got the balance a little bit more right between how they deal with stressors. So what we're looking at is how, what's the ideal balance of the sympathetic to the parasympathetic tone. In native, more relaxed cultures, they tend to be in that sympathetic, excited, fight-flight mode for maybe 30% of the time. So in the resting, recuperating, regenerating, parasympathetic tone, for about 70% of the time. Hands up if this is your life. I know I can't. I haven't even probably got those ratios reversed. I'm working hard to. But we find in these, this Western culture particularly that there's so much demand on our time and our energy that we're, we're often and too often in the sympathetic tone. And that's what we see when we look at the posture in core postural alignment. So let's just have a look here at the reaction to stress and what actually changes. So here we have this sort of ideal posture. We encounter a stressor, we recover. We go beyond these at the list of stressors again. We're experiencing one for too long or more than one and we go into the state of strain. So we start to see changes to the posture. There are internal changes and the body is adapting, trying to restore the blood pressure and trying to restore the blood volume. It's in that state of resistance here. If left, we get greater distortion. We call it, we, we, we would think of it as aging, but this can actually happen at any age, this posture. It's not necessarily age related. We do see it more in the elderly population. However, you can see it in young children if they're struggling with severe illnesses or they're in a state of constant strain and if left we get more pain and disease and we end up if not if it's not dealt with in the third stage of the general adaptation syndrome syndrome 
exhaustion. And if we don't do anything then, then death ensues. So slowly what's happening is the body's becoming a little bit more acidic. We've got acidosis going on. And it's just constantly using up our resources, producing metabolic to toxins, which result in this process of acidosis within the body. Those metabolic toxins are deposited out, which start to change the shape of the muscles. So we start to see all sorts of postural changes occurring. Now, within core postural alignment, we will assess this degree of postural change at the plumb line. Take little measurements, deliver an alignment, and our aim is to decrease, obviously, the postural distortion and therefore decrease the load on the body, that allostatic load. What we feel is with time, we can work backwards. We may never ever get back to the ideal, but as long as we're working back along this pathway, that's our aim with core postural alignment. So we have, with core postural alignment, this measurable way of assessing where somebody is within that general adaptation syndrome. So we can look at posture, but also what we want to know is what's going on, on underneath. So it's just as interesting to have a look at what's going on within the neurological and the endocrinological changes that are recurring as a result of the postural distortions. This looks complicated, but let me just briefly go over it. When we've got a gravitational challenge, that's what we like to call sometimes um, when we've lost the posture, that gravity is a challenge on us, so it's a gravitational challenge. We have a loss of the physiological efficient posture. We have a reaction here in the spinal cord, stimulates the thalamus. We may get information coming up to the cerebral cortex, but we may not. But from the thalamus, we stimulate the hypothalamus and the amygdala, one of the main stress and anxiety sensors within the body. We learn via the hippocampus a way of dealing with this stress or we go back to some of our own patterns. But what we're stimulating is all the various stress and stress relay centers within the body. What we're stimulating within the brain, within, sorry, within the joints of the spine are little receptors called nociceptors. So we're seeing the stimulation of the sympathetic tone as the result of the stimulation of the nociceptors of the spinal joints. And this re stimulates the stress receptors in the brain, leading to a production of huge array of stress hormones that are related to the inflammatory response. And if left unchecked, these, this response continues and leads to what we have described as allostosis and conditions of inflammation. So we're stimulating these receptors within the joints, the nociceptors. What we're also seeing is this stimulation of the hypothalamus, pituitary and adrenal pathway, the HPA. So we've got this huge stressful stress response going on. If we look right down here, there's only about 50 of 3 trillion messages that have being produced in this state that actually reach the cerebral cortex that we become aware of, that we register as pain or discomfort or something. So it's a huge response that's going on in a subconscious way. What do we do with co-postural alignment? This is just explaining that the, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis produces cortisol and other stress hormones, which act on multiple organs, organs systems producing the <laughs> inflammatory response. That's it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, the inflammatory response. <laughs> so what we see is a reduction in, with our work, CPA aims to reduce the postural distortion pattern. We're aiming to reduce this inflammatory response. And we do this through a series of very gentle massage strokes, which we call signals. We apply them in the prone position to the postural muscles in particular. It improves, induces an extremely relaxed state, stimulating the parasympathetic tone, stimulating that regeneration and repair. We're trying to reduce the neurological and endocrine response, which is typical of the stress response. 
So the numerology of an alignment looks quite different. So we stimulate the cerebellum, which is the body's integration and learning center. It's its center of homeostasis. We stimulate the vestibular nerve, the paraspinal muscles, the tone, the posture. So we're stimulating quite a different area within the brain. We're stimulating different receptors, known as proprioceptors, within the spinal joints. These send the messages up to the brain, stimulating or switching off the stress centers and stimulating the creative learning movement centers. Here we are. So what we can see here is um, from what's happening within the cerebellum, the rebalancing of the homeostasis, we switch off the HPA axis, we switch off the amygdala, and we're stimulating the hippocampus, the learning center, to learn new ways. And movement helps us to learn. Children, particularly, should be moving to learn. They should be stimulating their proprio receptors. The, the movement that we get within the spine and the stimulation of these proprio receptors is being called a nutrient for the brain. It's extremely important and it's a way of overcoming the inflammatory response. So what we're doing with CPA is we're trying to allow more movement to occur in those particular joints through an improvement of posture to stimulate this regeneration. Now, Dr. John Minardi, who's quite popular and well-known within the chiropractic world, he reckons that 90% of all the problems that your patients present with result from stress and inflammation. He's written books on this as well. So that's quite, actually, quite a statement. If 90% of the people, what they're presenting with is due to stress and inflammation. And I, for one, think that's probably quite true when you can see what's happening within the brain with that sort of neurological response. What we are seeing at the, pl at the plumb line is actually the physiological, the, the physical reaction to that, what's going on within the um, neurological system. So my question is, what if your general well-being, your physiology, your emotional well-being, your internal architecture, the position of the internal organs, your consciousness, your connection with something greater than you and bringing it down to the earth, the length of your life, obviously, your inflammatory response. What if all of these are being affected by your posture and your relationship to gravity? That's what we're interested in core postural alignment, is improving our posture, to reduce that inflammation and improve our relationship to gravity so we are more balanced with the ground reaction force coming back up from the earth. Something to think about. So for more information about core postural alignment and about what we're aiming to do, please go to the website corepostalalignment.com. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm Sue Weller and maybe we'll meet again, meet, meet at some point. Thank you.